Why do genres die? Developers of platform games have been asking this question for the past half decade. Many would argue that it's all been downhill since Super Mario 64, thanks to uninspired clones. Others say that it's the push towards more adult-oriented games. No matter the take, Super Mario Galaxy is here to shatter expectations, and it's simply out of this world. <laughs> When Nintendo traditionally designs Mario games, it creates and perfects the gameplay first, and then it works around those elements to pen the pros. This approach has resulted in a lot of forgettable and repetitive plots. Things are a little different here, but not much. It's the annual Mushroom Kingdom Comet Festival, and Mario and crew are celebrating. Taking advantage of the loose guard, Bowser sweeps in and rips Princess Peach's castle from the ground, taking her into space. In the midst of the fray, Mario gets zapped and conveniently awakens in space. The chase is on. He gets some help from a new character, Princess Rosalina, who offers her observatory as Mario's gateway to the cosmos. And you can pretty much guess the rest. Once again, we have a Mario game with a shell of a story, and this one doesn't even have any ridiculous twists. But if you're interested in Super Mario Galaxy for its story, then you might want to check where you've been for the last 20 years. Galaxy has gone back to the more open-ended design of the N64 game. It's all about collecting stars to unlock new levels, but you can have almost a dozen of them selectable at once, allowing you to pick and choose which way you want to play through the game. The observatory acts as the hub, connecting you to all six of the primary solar systems. Inside each solar system is a handful of galaxies with a list of stars to snare on each. Like in most Mario games, there are tons of hidden levels to unlock, and 120 stars to collect for the completest. The not-so-obsessive can technically finish the story after snagging just 60 stars. Other items of interest include star bits, which act as the currency of the game. You'll use them to gain extra men, and to unlock hidden galaxies by bribing creatures called Lumas that are scattered throughout the cosmos. Yellow coins restore Mario's health, and eventually you unlock purple coin challenges where you must collect a hundred of them to get a star. They're certainly some of the more demanding challenges in the game. The galaxies outwardly appear much smaller than the typical level in a 3D Mario game, but there are bits and pieces that are out of reach until you find the proper transportation to get there. Not all the stars are unlocked for play in each galaxy as soon as you enter it. There are three base stars for each, and then you'll start tackling time stages, or other instances where you must complete the objective without taking a single shot. All of this is based upon which comets are randomly circling the galaxy at the time. There's no denying that Super Mario Galaxy predominantly sticks with the tried and true, with a few tweaks. There's always a wide variety of tasks to tackle, but the collecting has been made optional. You'll rip through a good 30 to 40 hours of play if you're trying to get all the stars. And there's a two-player option where the second player can collect star bits, though it's pretty pointless. Regardless, you'll get plenty of playtime for your cash, and it's structured so elegantly that you'll never be left wondering where to go or what to do next. <laughs> Platformers are an interesting genre in that they typically include just about every conceivable gameplay style. That definitely hasn't changed here, except now you're doing it all with the Wii Remote and Nunchuck. While it doesn't take things as far as, say, WarioWare or Zack and Wiki, the list of activities is deep, and most importantly, fun. You'll use it to blow Mario in a bubble around a maze, point and click to navigate space, and steer yourself as you race around a liquefied track on the back of a stingray. You're never going to do the same thing for long unless you want to. All of Mario's prerequisite abilities are intact. You get his spot-on, momentum-based platforming controls, complete with the long jump, flip jump, triple jump, <laughs> and the like. His lone Wiimote-based actions include the spin attack, which is pulled off by shaking it back and forth, and collecting star bits with the pointer functionality, which becomes a game unto itself. Power-ups are in no short supply either. You've likely already seen his B ability that lets him reach high platforms, and another new feature allows Mario to walk on water. There are also old favorites like Fire Mario, and a new variation of the Wing Cap. Almost all of them are pulled off flawlessly, with enough nuance that you actually become good at using them. The lone exception is Spring Mario, 
mostly because its unwieldy controls must be manipulated in tight quarters. So we've got lots of variety, Mario's incredible running and jumping control, and plenty of sweet power-ups. We got that 10 years ago, and in 2007 the expectations are higher. There has to be a hook, and in this case, the angle is gravity and spherical worlds. Each piece of real estate Mario steps on has its own set of gravitational properties, and it's a blast to just stand between two celestial bodies, jump into the air, and see how the pull from each affects Mario's travel. It creates all sorts of interesting scenarios. Ever tried platforming upside down? Or how about upside down and backwards? You'll do both constantly in Galaxy. At first it can be disorienting, but an excellent camera system keeps the gags at bay. It opens a whole new realm of gameplay opportunities, and the game does an amazing job of squeezing the mechanic for every last drop of fun. But you won't spend all your time upside down. There's also a fair share of flat terrain to help you regain your bearings. And best of all, there's a great selection of old-school side-scrolling levels that work the gravity effect over. Other games have tinkered with spherical worlds, but none have worked gravity into the equation. Super Mario Galaxy absolutely nails them both. Super Mario Galaxy is one of those releases that challenges the perception of how games can play. Mixing complicated physics with pinpoint navigation may seem intimidating, but it's all parceled out in such small, intelligent portions that the learning curve is almost non-existent. Couple this with the excellent variety and sublime controls, and perhaps we're witnessing the rebirth of the platform. We think everyone will at least agree that it's miles beyond a backpack filled with water. <laughs> Super Mario Galaxy is a case of doing the best with what you've got. The Wii isn't really a polygon cruncher, but the way the levels are set up with small pieces of terrain displayed at a time allows for some sweet whiz-bang with no hit on performance. Fur shading, specular highlights, and a variety of other gizmos take it beyond the flatly shaded Mario games of yore. You can almost understand Nintendo's hardware vision with this game. Would more processing power make the series' simple art style have any more character? Likely not. It goes beyond the typical Wii mantra of, it's good enough, and into the realm of, this looks amazing. The creativity on display is strictly top shelf, and it makes it easy to forget the repetitive, waterlogged environs from Sunshine. The audio is just as impressive. It may not be Dolby Digital 5.1, but the channel separation in this ProLogic 2 production is incredibly discreet. The compositions are at one moment rousing, and the next soothing. You'll simply never grow tired of the music, and you'll find yourself randomly humming some tunes as you go about your day. Just when you think a genre is dead, along comes a game that pushes perceptions to the fringe. Super Mario Galaxy is one of them. It's a perfect blend of the established and the unexpected and a finely crafted piece of software that will infect your subconscious and make you dread dropping the controller. The accessibility, ingenuity, variety, quality, and quantity are impeccable. The only real uncertainty is how much you'll allow it to take over your life. <laughs>